Behind these one-way gates is another world that many people are sadly just too afraid to enter. They will bring you into Tijuana, Mexico, which has a reputation as a very violent city. It also happens to be one of the most colorful, dynamic places that I've ever visited with really nice people and some amazing food. So I found a way to get in with my iPhone camera and chronicle a day in Tijuana with no problems whatsoever. And I got some pretty memorable shots. Would you like to see them and find out how I pulled this off? Stay tuned. So the secret to a successful visit to Tijuana, sign up for a tour with a local. I'm Jeff, how you doing? Nice to meet you. Same welcome here. Thank you. Buena. Thank you for doing this. No, no, no. So, first of all, well, I say welcome. Yes. Uh, the rules are: don't judge people. It's... Never mess with the wrong people. Yes. Have fun, enjoy, and don't judge a book by the cover. Welcome. Be Bienvenidos a Be Tijuana. Be Be <laughs> so we. In the beginning of the art of Tijuana that it was created in, the, in December 1999. And just to say goodbye to the old era and welcome to a new one. Natalie's tour brought us to Revolution Avenue, which is the main tourist area of Tijuana, where you can shop and eat to your heart's content. Let, vamos a explorar Tijuana. <laughs> Alrighty, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> the tour actually began with lunch. I have to take three great photos of Tijuana today. Yeah. So the arch, is that one of them? The arch, yeah. That's one of them. A, a back alley, a street, a hidden... Uh... Revolution. Revolution is the heart of Tijuana. Yeah. So there's a lot of places to take, like the Caesar restaurant that we create, the Caesar salad. And we're going to go there. Oh, we're going to go there. Gonna go there. We... The arch was easy. It's right outside the restaurant. Though, if you want to get a really good shot, you want to go a few blocks south of that restaurant and catch it in front of the Tijuana Highway sign. Gives you at second angle and also at nighttime when you get a little color in the sky. If we continued on our walk, we stopped by a few of those gift shops that are synonymous with Mexico. Rugs and Day of the Dead stuff and t-shirts, you name it. I made a point to check out the postcard rack, which is always great for photo ideas. Hey, let me get a picture of you in front of all those shoes. <laughs> Thank you. And the rain, it miraculously stopped. See, we have the sun. After we leave. So fun. <laughs> we got it. And then, thankfully, Natalie took us down one of those hidden alleyways into this arcade that was just so chock full of photo ops. So this is Pasaje Gomez. It was created in the 1800s where the people used to sell their curios, of cantina, restaurants, and all that. Street portraits are the hallmark of great travel photography, but sometimes it's a little awkward to ask people who don't understand your language to pose for a photo. I took advantage of having Natalie as our guide, ask her friend, the shop owner, to pose for me for a quick iPhone portrait, and I got him right there in his environment. Settings, the 1X wide camera, um, nothing special, didn't go with portrait mode or anything like that. And Yoda has some beautiful daughters. Yeah. And they were so gorgeous. I saw a lot of men getting them. A Maria Hachi, a trio, a trio means a threesome of three guys playing the guitar. That's why we call it trio. So they will come here to play music and send them some chocolates, flowers. And he's, so, they, so the owner, the father, now he was so protective with the daughters made the thing on the top so they don't kind to get in the room with the daughter. Would you believe it was already time for a snack? 
This little underground place happened to be one of Natalie's favorite restaurants in Tijuana, famous for their blue corn tortillas. So they create the best tortillas here because they're hungry. So, yeah, and you can hear right here there's some music uh, classes, they give classes. It is, and sometimes they, they, every Friday they start with live music right here in front of us. Oh, what <laughs> So that's a blue corn quesadilla. And got some veggies there, and natural cheese, honey tortilla. People come to, to Tijuana to drink, to party, yeah. to get cheap medicine. Uh, <laughs> is there more to, to, to Tijuana than that? Plastic surgeries, um, Nail. auto, nails, massage. And I mean, unfortunately, a lot of people that come here just for one reason and they only see what is the strip clubs but we're not strip clubs they are nice now full of strip clubs they only go to the smallest places of tijuana instead of coming like get out and see more about them unfortunately because of the news and social media they say a lot of bad things about us they, a lot of people, they are afraid, so that's why they hire me, so I'm giving the tour. <laughs> After lunch, it was back to Revolution Avenue. And this is a seed street, aka La Sexta. It, uh, everyone knows for the best area to have fun, have some drinks, tequila, mezcal, beer, everything you would like. So where do they go? Two blocks from there, and they'll go to more blocks from there, there's all bars. So like right across the street? And yeah, on the top, second floor, first floor. And then we hit another arcade, even <laughs> more colorful than the first one. Yeah, so you can see this wall, it, it was created by Edgar Miguel, one of the famous artists of Tijuana. He doesn't only make these walls, he made sculptures for Bully Demon, the one of the best of uh, wrestling of Lucha Libre. And top, on the top you can see different artists of Tijuana. Okay, so what's next? You will see, you will see. So this is the Tequila Museum. It's got, they have here more than 800 different brands of tequila and mezcal. So come and take a look inside. What's the idea between having a barbershop and a tequila stop at the same time? Because they can come here and have a drink while they have a car. <laughs> but just a little bit of tequila. That's it, no? We give you a small frambo. And the first ones you're gonna taste are tequila liqueurs. So these are gonna be sweet. Then this is not a song. This is an apple flake. Okay, wait. Perfect. Feliz año! I use a little bit of it. Um, for mango spicy too. But yeah. They know that smells so good like pinky. Wanna? After Jacqueline got her taste test, I did some close ups of the bottles, which were okay. The scorpion in the bottle was kind of cool, but it was really the barber that I loved. And I had Natalie ask the barber if it was okay for me to get some portraits of him. He combed his hair, he spruced himself up. I love his smock, I love the red chairs, I love the whole motif of the Barber of Tijuana. I used the 1X lens on the iPhone, I had him stand, I had him sit, I tried all sorts of different uh, angles that I could get him to do in a short period of time. Black and white was my favorite, the red chair. Love the red chair, it was really hard to photograph because I couldn't get in front of it, I had to sort of stand on top of it. I went ultra wide angle and of course, I did a little posing with our friend, the barber, as well. After the barbershop, we headed over to Constitution Avenue to this great old movie theater that is now 
an art gallery and coffee shop and outdoor cinema with an amazing backyard. So this is the Cinema Bufasar, it was created in 1951. As it began to get a little darker, Tijuana truly came alive in the evening as Natalia promised. Let's not forget about the Caesar salad invented in Tijuana and available to all right there back on Revolution Avenue. Here we are. Can you believe this is Tijuana? Pretty amazing, huh? Okay, let's check it out. So we talked at the beginning about Tijuana, don't believe what you read. We haven't seen basically any homeless. Nobody's come up to us and asked us for money. Nobody's, nobody jumped up in a car and threw us in. I don't see no guns, no drugs, no left. What happened? <laughs> what happened? Is this a slow day today? Uh, no. We don't do that. We don't have that. Well, you have it somewhere. Yes. But not on Revolution uh, Avenue. Not all this area. Like... What did I think about today? It was really good. I thought it was um, actually very surprising how nice Revolution Avenue was. Like you, I've heard so many bad things about it. I live right in Los Angeles. I'm always in San Diego. And people always warn me, you'll get kidnapped, you'll get mur murdered, you'll get robbed. But I didn't know if that was really true. I don't like to believe, you know, it seems a little prejudiced to me, to be honest. So I thought I came here by myself, totally alone. And I have not seen any crime. I haven't felt at risk of danger. No one has followed me. Every single person has been nice, friendly, welcoming. It's been a very amazing experience. What, what's your highlight? The food. There's food on every corner, every street, and not just Mexican food. They have Japanese, Italian, Thai. I'm not on camera right now, but I'd say the art also. Oh, yeah. Right? The art, it's like, the art is everywhere. On the walls, it's free, it's street artists. Some of it's political, all of it's colorful. 
and it just is representative of Mexico, I think. So beautiful. Reality check true. We had a great time and no one bothered us on our day in TJ. But the media is not lying. Tijuana can be dangerous. It has the most homicides in Mexico for the authorities, about 2,000 annually in a city of just over 2 million. However, most of the crime is cartel related. So if you're going to visit, do it wisely. As Natalie says, use a tour guide to help keep you out of trouble. Keep your head down and stick to the tourist areas. So if you're planning on going to Tijuana, I can help, really can. It's really easy to walk over the bridge near San Diego and right into Mexico. I should know, in my last Tijuana video, I was visiting San Diego. I saw a brochure about spending the day in TJ and I figured, why not? I parked the car in San Rosidro at the border, which is about 15 minutes from San Diego, and I waltzed right into Mexico. What I didn't have at the time was my passport or any cash as I'm an all credit card type guy. Now the people in Mexico did not care that I didn't have a passport. They waved me right in. No cash? Well, that's another story. And getting back into the USA was an, also another story and it took some finagling. My California Real ID, which is an enhanced driver's license, saved my hide and got me home. That was in 2022. For my most current 2024 visit, Mexico was as lax as ever. The only thing I had to do was put my backpack through security. I was never once asked to show a passport. Now I did bring some cash with me this time, which was a good thing as most stores, especially the ones selling all those great street tacos, wanted dollars, not credit cards. It took me about 30 minutes to get through the line back into the USA and once at the gate, for the purposes of video journalism, when they asked me for the passport, I told them I had a real ID. I received so many comments in the last Tijuana video telling me that a real ID was all you needed, but not this time. That wasn't good enough for the guards. They told me, passport, that's it, passport, that's what we need to see. So I reached into the backpack and I showed my papers and here I am. So what you need to know if you're gonna go to Tijuana from San Diego, a trolley from San Diego will take you directly to the plaza at the border, which is called Head East. The 17 mile trip will take you about 45 minutes. You could try driving over the border instead, waiting forever to get through and then try to figure out how to park in a strange country. So you could take the trolley or you could drive and park in one of the many lots at the border and then just walk across. In less than a mile, once you pass through the Mexico clearing station, you're there in Tijuana. Another idea, you could board a shuttle bus from the parking lot. It'll take you directly through to the main tourist area of Tijuana for about 20 bucks and that's the easy part. Once you're ready to come home, whether on foot or via a return ticket on the shuttle bus, there could be a long line of people waiting to get through, whether you're walking or waiting for the bus. It could take you hours or as little as 30 minutes, which is what it took me on the last trip. The shuttle bus does not make the line disappear. Now, the best experience of them all, as I've told you, is booking a tour and having a local help navigate your way through the streets of Tijuana. You can find our guide, Natalie, on Airbnb by searching in the experiences section, Tijuana, and quote, walk and learn in the streets of Tijuana, unquote. That's her tour. There are several other tour options as well. I'm Jefferson Graham. Thanks so much for watching PhotoWalks TV. This is the time where I say, hey everybody, please subscribe to PhotoWalks TV right here on YouTube. Please like, please comment, please share. Let me hear from you below and please stay tuned for more episodes. I'll see you on the next edition of PhotoWalks TV.